Hello everyone, I'm really happy to see you here this morning. I'll talk about Retroshed, it's a decentralized uh, platform. And, uh, in Retroshed we, we have many things implemented, but this is decentralized, in is censorship and spam resistant in a way that still guarantee plurality. Uh, it's both anonymous and authenticated when you need one thing or the other. It's, it's full of, of, of crypto inside, so when, when probably later you will have a lot of questions of for which service, what kind of encryption it's used. And keeps working even if the internet breaks. So for example, if you are in an isolated part of, of, of uh, Amazonia, you could use uh, RetroShare to communicate between different tribes, uh, far, well, not that far away one from the other, but you could. Uh, so uh, RetroShare is a friend-to-friend -friend network. So basically, this is the local view that anode has of, of, of the network. It's basically him, his friends, and if his friends uh, give access to the friends of friends. Still, it can communicate also with people that, it, uh, that doesn't know where they are located in the network. And so you can reach in uh, any, any participant of the, of the network. That's, that's done through different mechanisms. One of them is start to routing. So when you try to establish a communication be, uh, with someone that is far away from you, you the information gets uh, opened from node to node uh, to up to the destination node. And uh, the, um, the node in the middle doesn't know who is the origin of the message and doesn't know who is uh, the actual uh, destination and doesn't know the content of the destination. They just know the last op before them and the first op after them. And it's, it's suitable for, to transfer any kind of content, being it lightweight, large text messages, or EVS file, or, or whatever. And another system to uh, expand the communication beyond the, the, um, the trusted friends circle is the is general exchange system is an asynchronous messaging uh, asynchronous uh, information propagation system so you can propagate information toward nodes that are not uh, connected at the same time with you in the network benefiting from the from the friend to friend network so if, if there is just one friend of you online that information will be propagated to that friend and then you for example go offline because your electricity uh, finished and that friend will propagate that, that information to the next one, and, and so on. And uh, as, as it, this, um, this mechanism is redundant in provide storage, it's not very suitable for uh, every payload. So for example, if you would uh, transfer a, um, a time series of, of, of sensor data of four gigabyte, GXS is not the right tool. This is the turtle routing. But you could use this uh, system to inform the other that the that data is available at your node, for example. Uh, another thing that we recently added is deep search, that uh, through taking advantage of Sapian uh, search engine, uh, uh, every retrocheck node that index is, uh, is data and meta metadata is content. So when, when you search on the retrocheck network, the, um, the, the search can can investigate inside the content. Of, of course, it's, it's anonymous, it's decentralized, and so on. So we have this uh, uh, long-standing QT GUI. You probably saw this some time ago if you already used Retrochet. This is an example of file search. There is no, there is no server who index the file. It's every node indexes its own files. And, and when a search request is made, it, every node answers with the result if they have some. Otherwise, they don't. And this is uh, a service that we call channels. It's used to publish organized content through general exchange system. So for example, you can see those videos are Creative Commons. And they are uh, uh, sorted because they are uh, a series. So you can access the whole series of those of those video with the description, um, a preview, and then you can download them from the or stream them for, through the turtle um, to the turtle routing. So 
Uh, and from the software architecture point of view, uh, RetroShare is cross-platform as independent uh, core and user interface. It's ex extensible through C++ and offer an API. It's extensible through JSON API. Extensible with runtime loadable plugins. So you, for example, you can prepare your uh, punto, uh, dot .so uh, la, uh, plugin and load it at runtime if you need to extend even more uh, RetroShare. And that's a zero cost automatic uh, serialization in the serialization framework. It means that when you define a new data type, it's very easy to make the data type tra uh, transmittable over network or storable or visible to the JSON API. Um, this is the, uh, the architecture of, um, of the JSON API. So from one side you have RetroShare service or also the RetroShare GUI super deep, but let's use RetroShare service. Inside it has a use LibRetroShare and RESTBED and the C++ API is exposed to, to HTTP to, for example, another hub that want to use the decentralization and cryptographic features and anonymity feature of RetroShare that are already implemented to expose a new, a new kind of service. So uh, the C++ and the JSON API are always coherent because the JSON API is generated from um, starting from the C++ API. So you will never have uh, the C++ API and JSON API will be always feature pair. Uh, you, you will not be penalized to be using JSON API instead of C++. And uh, also the, um, the types of data you see in C++ are, are the same in JSON because they are, because of our automatic uh, serialization system, they are directly converted to JSON objects. And the other advantage is that we write just one documentation and it's valid for the C++ API, JSON API, or whatever language you want to use. <laughs> so what, uh, what happened? Uh, this is a method from the C++ API. In the class uh, login helper, we have this method as get location. This is a method to return all your available profile on that node. As you can see, it, it, uh, the return type is void, but it takes as a parameter uh, a vector of locations, and in the in the documentation of the method, there is a description. It's it's flagged as exported on JSON API, and also you can you, you can see there is the param location is flagged as be as an output parameter. So you don't need to provide that parameter when you call that method, but that parameter will be used to give you the output. Um, and, and so, um, and, that, and that is a pointer to uh, the global instance of that class as lo login helper. So as you can see that the type of the parameter is a vector of locations, okay? So let's explore this, this type. The type location is defined like that. The structure location is it, uh, inherit from uh, 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 RAS serializable and inside of those members as uh, location ID, as PGP ID, location name and PGP name. And then with this, in this method that's called serial process, those, me, those members are, reg are registered for serialization. It means that those members will be 100% ac um, accessible from JSON and also from binary and so on and are sendable over network and so on. So what happens if we want to access that method from, from the JSON API? For example, from, from the shell. So uh, there is the API, the URL where the API is listening, that is on our machine. And then with the, a plain car call, we just call the method. It's RS login helper and get location. And uh, what JQ is just to pretty print the JSON output, but you can avoid that if you want. And this is the output. As you can see, we get the array of locations. And inside the array, there is a location that has an ID, uh, an ID a PGP ID, a location name, and a PGP name. So your experience using the JSON API is completely coherent with the experience of a developer using the C++ API. So uh, let's, for the API, of, of course, is authenticated. Otherwise, any, any program running on your computer or your phone that is more easy you have fishy things installed, 
could access the API and store your private data. So uh, the, the calls, most of the calls of the API are authenticated, and you, as you see, you can you have a API token to access it. And again, you can pass parameter through again with car. You just pass the parameter formatted in JSON. You are passing, for example, here we are uh, asking to the API to get a, an invite for a friend to invite a friend, and we are passing the ID of the location of the invite through that JSON string, and and then just call the method res peers get retro shared invite, and that's the output. We just get this this big this big string that is just a, a base 64 invit, invitation. So as, as you know, JSON and HTTP are uh, pretty well supported on almo almost any decent language nowadays. So you can do very, very similar thing from Python. You can do it from JavaScript on a web page. That's, that's a, an extract from our, our experimental web interface for RetroShare. As, as you can see here, this is the, the call to the JSON API. It's just a JSON API request. Here the path of the method. And here we are, pass, we are passing the JSON for the parameter we are passing to the method. And so you, you can do almost with same easiness from, from any language. It's always HTTP and JSON. And it's well documented. It is <laughs> very important. So this is an example of a chat application, an experimental chat application developed of using uh, RetroShare JSON API for Android. Those, those, those little faces are, are a very easy way to uh, have an approximative way of verifying the fingerprint of the user. So it's very user friendly also for people that have no idea of cryptographic signature and so on. They can just tell to themselves the color they see in the face, and they almost um, verified their fingerprint. This is a, a new app that's called El Repoyo, El Repo.io, that uses JSON API to create a service to share culture and, uh, and curate and store and preserve culture. In, in they, it's mainly used in place where there is no very not, not good internet connection, so it takes advantage of community networks. The, all, when it's possible, RetroShare always use the local connection instead of using internet. Lo, by local, I don't mean just your Wi-Fi and your own. If you have you participate in a community network like uh, Freyfunk or Giphynet or whatever. Also, all the um, all the all the nodes reachable inside the community network that may be all the nodes of your city and so on are keep being reachable inside RetroShare. It doesn't need DNS and so on. And if someone uh, uh, took a picture of the of the solar uh, of the lunar eclipse uh, in in January and shared it on the Repodio, and someone also uh, this picture of this spider. And this is another uh, example usage of El Repoyo that is an, an app that uses JSON, RetroShare JSON API. So you are, uh, this RetroShare is a free software for a free society. You are welcome to contribute even on your spare time, or you can apply to, uh, for, for some grants to work on it, for example, to NLNet like we did or, or some on Summer of Code. And, and we will be happy to review your pull request and accept it if, or suggest modification if they are needed. And thanks. If you have questions, you're welcome. <laughs> ah, of course, RetroShare may, may be used also through Tor and uh, E2P and other anonymized networks. Cyril is from RetroShare Project 2. Welcome. I kindly ask everyone to remain seated during the questions. That would be super kind of you. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman over there has the mic for the questions. <coughs> Hi. The question is, how do you manage to make two nodes to talk to each other when they are netted? I mean, when the two machines are behind a net, how do you do that? 
Okay. The, uh, the question is, uh, was how do you manage to have um, uh, a connection to a person that is behind the NAT? So RetroShield implements uh, various NAT hole punching strategies. So it, it's always trying to, to punch a hole through the NATs. So you may even take a, have a direct connection to someone behind the NAT. But if it's not the case, it uses the free ends of friends that use the friend-to-friend -friend network to route through to get to the other person that is behind the NAT. So hopefully you always get some trusted node that is not behind the NAT and it, that will be instant connection or otherwise you will have, um, will have this NAT all punching uh, process. And also, um, also RetroShare support connection through Tor that has very good mechanism to punch through NATs. And also it support IPv6 that doesn't uh, have all those problems with NATs because it usually doesn't, uh, is not provided through NAT but through public IPs. Uh, so is the JSON API available for Androids or does it use C++ and uh, GNI or other interfaces? So uh, the JSON API is available on Android. So those, those applications that you saw were screenshots of, of Android phones and there is the RetroShare service running on Android and the app running on Android too. So the service is C++, but it's compiled to native code and there is a, 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 an Android package that you install and then you can, whatever app that has is token authorized by on the RetroShare service can use the JSON API. This, this is me again. The question is, how do you manage if, you know, do you have the possibilities to have a multi-device? I mean, you Can you repeat? I didn't understand. Do you have the abilities to have a multi-device? Uh, do you understand what you know? What? Is it possible to have multiple devices? Yeah, you can have multiple devices. They, they can share usually the PGP key, so your friend can recognize you, but they have different SSL key. So they are actually different nodes, but they are, they are capable of authenticating at the same profile. So you keep your friends? Yeah, you keep your friends, actually, yeah, across devices. Even if you, lost, if, you, if you lost the device, you can rebuild all the content and the, the, the network if you uh, add a, a new device after uh, losing one. Well, if, if you lose the device, you're... Repeat the question. Oh, well, ah, sorry. So it said if you lose your de uh, device, you can rebuild your network. Of course you can do it. You, we suggest to keep backup of your profile. But uh, in case, uh, well, the, the PGP is, pro is protected with, with a password, so you can use a good password. But in case you are concerned, it, and if you are uh, a bit paranoid, uh, we suggest to create, a, if you lose your device, someone may May, may try to brute force your PGP key and, and take it. So in that case, depending on your security needs, you could decide to restore it from a backup or, um, or create a new profile and tell to your friend that your profile changed. And you have your, your content back? The no, I, 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 well, if, you, if you do the backup, yes. If not, you, you don't have your, your content back. You, well, if you can subscribe to forums and the things that you were participating uh, before, and your friends will pass you again the content, but it depends on the service. For your file, probably you have to look for them again, and, and so on. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. okay, can you just speak up, because the, otherwise... Yeah. Uh, so, um, in the case that you lose your key, uh, how can you, is there any way to make sure that you revocate the key so that it cannot be used maliciously? The, repeat, uh, the repeat the question. Sorry? Repeat the question. Okay, so in case you lose your key, there is some way to ensure that your key is not used maliciously. They, it, well, you, it's a PGP key, so you can revocate it. So you could publish that, the revocation, but then it's up to your friend to update the PGP key database and, and know that key is revocated. Otherwise, it's like, uh, like any cryptographic key, it could be con continue to be used. But you cannot publish it, right? So they... Yeah, you can publish it. It's, it's a file, actually. So, yeah, so they subscribe to it and file automatically. 
Sorry? In a way that it's automatic to the client, no. Uh, no, no, no there, there is not implemented. But it's, but it's, a, good, it's a good suggestion. Yeah, it it's could be implemented, yes, yeah. Another question? Do we have time? One more over there? Uh, if you have multiple devices, is it possible to uh, sync them? So for example, if somebody steals one of your devices, can you sync the data from that device to your... It would be possible. Question? Is, Can you repeat the question? Ah, sorry. So if you have multiple devices, it's possible to synchronize the data between them. It's possible. Actually, some services like Forum, if you are subscribed from two devices, they, you see more, almost the same. Uh, it's possible, but it's not implemented yet. In fact, we have a proposal for if you want to apply for, for the Summer of Code or some other grants to implement synchronization across devices. So we wait for for our poll request and, and we'll be happy to review it. If there is no more question. Uh, uh, do you have some mechanism to uh, install uh, the service on a VPS and have just a GUI installed on your uh, desktop or something like that? Yeah, of, of course. The, you can install. Uh, ah, okay. Do you have some mechanism? <laughs> uh, uh, that, so you can install the uh, RetroShare code on a VPS and then have your device you have running just the graphical interface? Yeah, the answer is yes. You could just install the RetroShare service on any machine and then access it through the JSON API. Thank you very much. If you have more questions, feel free yeah. to contact him. Feel free to contact him. And yeah. also, please, uh, for every talk you will attend in FOSDEM, uh, if you could leave a, a constructive feedback on the website for speakers and for uh, room organizers, it would be really great. Thank you.